What's up guys, Headphones Little here, back with another film review, and for this particular review, I wa- um, so over Christmas I break, I had the urging to watch a Jack Ryan movie, or make sure that I had seen all the Jack Ryan movies that I could, that I'm sure I had not seen, and as I was browsing around, I found out, or I remember that I had not seen the 2002 film, The Sum of All Fears, with Ben Affleck and Morgan Freeman, so I decided to give it a watch to see how it holds up. So before I get started, of course, the summary of the movie is CIA analyst Jack Ryan must stop the plans of a neo-Nazi faction that threatens to introduce a catastrophic conflict between the United States and Russia's president by detonating a nuclear weapon at a football game in Baltimore, Maryland. So overall, the movie was okay. It was a good um good enough Jack Ryan film that serves as a prequel to some of the other films so um you see uh, Jack Ryan kind of being a younger version of him or supposed to be a younger version of himself um and you have him um getting into getting more into the forward role of pre- pre- presenting his opinion so while this is a prequel to some of the other films it's not to the point where he's met um, his friend from the other films that's up in the government areas. So there is that. Um, but he do, he does meet with Morgan Freeman's or Morgan Freeman's character uh, William Cabot, I think, who um, basically serves as his liaison um, in the government and. So semi trust him but kind of introduces him to the idea of not presenting his ideas unless he has facts and Jack Ryan kind of hitting back with presenting his ideas because he knows that um, or he has an inkling and he kind of has a research and he wants to present his um, theories ahead of time present his theories so that he can um, share the urgency of what he's doing and in the later movies his colleague in the government is played by James Earl Jones so there is that but overall the film was okay it was sort of a good start to the Jack Ryan franchise but from there that's really all I could think of or I started paying less and less attention to the plot just because it was it progressed enough on its own uh, decently enough and it concluded well enough um, but it came about more of a, um, basically it was a terrorist movie and that's about it. I mean, Jack, having the Jack Ryan name, if you didn't really know more about it or you don't watch any of the other films and you don't get anything else as far as, um, benefits from watching the movie. So as a Jack, if you're a Jack Ryan fan, then definitely watch it. Otherwise it was an okay movie. Um. But for me, it started coming down to seeing all these familiar faces of actors who we've seen in other places, and notably in um, superhero films. So we have actors like Ben Affleck, who played Batman, Morgan Freeman, who played Lucius Fox um, in the Dark Knight trilogy to um, be the um, employee of Wayne Manor and a friend to Bruce Wayne. Uh, We have James Cromwell, who plays Zephyr Cochran in the Star Trek film First Contact, I believe it was, who comes up with the warp drive. Uh, we have Lee Schreiber, who plays Sabretooth in the X-Men film, the first X-Men film, maybe the second, I forget if he was in the second one or third one. Um, my favorite one, though, and the one that kind of was throwing me off throughout the film was C.R.N. Hines, or Hins. I, he played the Russian, the, the newly elected Russian president in The Sum of All Fears. Um, and I couldn't quite place uh, why he looked familiar, and I got to thinking that he might have been a uh, mass raider in the Game of Thrones. And sure enough, browsing around on IMDb, that's exactly who he was. So it was a interesting thing to see there because the whole time I was like, or because I haven't done a rewatch of Game of Thrones in a while, my memory was kind of fuzzy. But I was like, he looks an awful lot like mass raider, and sure enough, he was. And then finally, we have Michael Byrne, who was in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. He was. Um, he was one of the German generals or colonels, one of the high, higher ups in the mili- German military. So um, those were kind of some of the things that kind of stood out. Um, I was thinking that maybe um, what the Bridget Moynihan who played um, 
Ben Affleck's girlfriend in the film might have been in some sci-fi-ish thing but the closest thing I could find was that she was in um, Mission Impossible I think the last one with Tom Cruise as his wife or something along those lines so uh, that was all I could get there and then of course a couple of other uh, familiar faces were Bruce McGill and Philip Baker Hall I did a quick overlook as to to, or to see if I could find out if they they were in anything um, sci-fi ish um, that I could tell, but there wasn't anything that I could find just browsing around initially uh, on the list. So they might have been, but their 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 big faces are kind of familiar because you do see them in a lot of these um, kind of military films or terrorist kind of films, as, regardless of if they're good guys or bad guys, but. That's kind of where, why I know their faces and I've seen them before. So when you see them, you, you're like, where else have I seen this guy? And I mean, there were nothing that stood out to me as far as films that I would have recognized them from. But I do know that they're there somewhere. So it might have been that I just need to go even further back than I did. But overall, the film was OK. It was interesting enough. It was good to see a, very, a much younger Ben Affleck. But you could kind of see his... It was kind of a smaller frame, but a similar frame to what we see him in as far as Batman in um, Batman v Superman. So less buff, but still the wide frame. Um, he doesn't quite have that Batman look, but he plays a kind of... He plays a more open and outward Bruce Wayne. So kind of a young Bruce Wayne. So I could see if they had if they had kind of brought this personality that he uses Jack Ryan into Batman v Superman, it would have been nice, but um, it's okay regardless of that here as far as this film is concerned. But overall, it was a good performance. Um, it was good to have his connection with um, Morgan Freeman. So it was um, a good performance there. And, but overall, it was a decent enough film. Nothing to phone home about, but um, now that I've seen this, I think I've seen just about all the Jack Ryan films, but I'm still going to go back and take a look at the rest of them. But as far as a grade, I'd probably give this film probably about a grade of a B to a B plus, maybe an A minus at best, but that's kind of stretching it for me. It was good. It wasn't um, anything great, but there's no, nothing really negative I could say about it. Um, the closest I could get is, as I mentioned, that um, take the Jack Ryan connection out of it, and it's basically another um, terrorist plot where you have the neo-Nazis trying to pit the United States and Russia against each other, take them out so that the um, real bad guys can um, gain power and dominance, and that's about it. And then you have a lucky CIA, CIA analyst who... Um, figures who kind of figures it out doesn't quite know what's going on but realizes that the villains who the Americans think is a villain are not the real villains and it's some, someone else and has to take extreme measures to get that figured out and squared away so that a global cat catastrophe is averted. So that's all there is for this particular review so if you have any questions, comments, concerns, want to get in touch with me you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. The website's PatelN01 for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show. And as always um, if you want to get access to early access to upcoming content, show notes for um, headphones nail news and all and things like that then be sure to support the show on patreon at patreon.com slash patel n01 but that is all for this particular episode thanks for tuning in and until next time